everyone, this is Archive at 12, and today we have a new Gale song. Uh, it's a new Bard song from Jonathan Young. This is his fourth uh, Bard song for Baldur's Gate 3 characters. I very much look forward to all of his Bard songs because so far all of his Bardcore songs have been phenomenal. Um, I've reacted to all of them so far, which have been Astarian, Karlak, and Shadowheart. Of those three, I was a little late to the party, and by a little late, I mean almost two weeks late to the Shadowheart one. So not as many people saw that. So if you want to check out that reaction, it'll be in the upper right hand corner over here in the iCards. So if you missed it, go check it out. Not very many people ended up seeing it. It kind of like got shafted by the uh, algorithm. So part of that's on me because I waited so long. But uh, if you want to go check it out, it will be up there. Uh, but uh, do so after this video so that that way you can watch this. I'll, I'll also put it at the end of the video, too, uh, so that that way you guys can watch this and then go to the end. But uh, today we're going to be focusing on his Gale song, The Wizard of Waterdeep. Gale is one of the more interesting characters in Baldur's Gate. I really enjoy his personality. I do find him to be a little too forward when it comes to like his attraction to you. Uh, in that game, which always throws me off just a little bit, but that's okay. It's Gale. It's Gale. He's a lovable scamp. So yeah, link will be in the description below if you want to watch. If you want to watch this without my commentary, because we'll be, I will be pausing. I will be talking about it. Oh my god. Uh, this is starting off wonderfully. Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> I like how they're they're going for like a very remorseful vibe. I like how Jonathan is like really covering uh like the pain that's etched in Gale's backstory. Like one of the things that I love about Gale, one of the things that like impresses me the most about Gale's backstory is the fact that he always tries to be really upbeat. He always tries to look on the, the positive side of things. But when you catch him in those rare moments where he lets his guard down and you actually can peer through the veil at the person that's underneath, and it's not the, the you know, optimistic individual. It's an individual that is scarred with uh, just a little bit of, like, jaded intent uh for for what sort of things uh, have happened to him and especially especially when you uh look at the all-encompassing things that happened with his uh his backstory with um i'm forgetting the goddess of magic's name but uh like his his love and basically his betrayal of her uh because of the fact that, you know, his his backstory is tied to the uh, to the orb that's in his chest, which is basically a walking magic bomb. So he studied texts that he shouldn't have. He wanted power that he didn't. Uh, he wanted to ascend to godhood to be closer to his goddess. And he paid for it. And now he lives with the consequences. Like when you peer through the veil of the optimism and actually see the person beneath, you realize this guy is a tormented soul that like he's he's not uh, he's not feeling all that great, honestly. You know. Once you actually get to know him, you realize that he's 
he's done some things that he deeply regrets and there's nothing he can really do to take that back so he's just trying to move on forward as best as he can until he gets a glimmer of hope that maybe just maybe he can get back in the good graces and then at that point it's like oh um he's willing to do whatever it takes to get back to his good graces even if that means trying to kill himself like that's or you know blow himself up i guess um that's uh yeah a very important and powerful uh part of gail's story and i like how jonathan's decided to cover that with like lyrics talking about you know the fact that his lust for power has driven him away from his one true love and now he's doing whatever to like like now he will he'll be willing to do whatever it takes to get back to it and he has a broken heart that he doesn't readily talk about like that's one thing i like about these bardcore songs um and one thing that i think is also limiting to the genre so you have to like do it in a specific way is that the bardcore songs are done as if a bard is singing them which means that you are limited not to speculation, but to specifically the facts of the character. Uh, and I think Jonathan's been doing a fantastic job of trying to intricately weave his own storytelling aspects into the lyrics. Um, this is especially prominent in both the Carlac and the, uh, the Shadowheart one, which is the reason why those are my two favorites of the four so far, although we haven't really finished the Gale one, so I, I can't really judge Gale's yet. But um, he was a little too on the nose, as I've said before, with the Astarian one. That basically just straight up told Astarian's, uh, like, his entire story. Uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of room for interpretation. It was literally what it was. But with the Carlac and the Shadowheart one, he had, uh, he, he introduced a lot more freedom and uniqueness to it. And it felt better. It felt more... Free, I think, is the best way to put it. Uh, so I've been looking forward to seeing how he's decided to change each uh, style for these characters, because some characters, their story is pretty, pretty limited. I feel like Astarians is one of them, um, just because of the fact that it's very tropey. Uh, but then you get more intricate characters like Shadowheart and Karlak, who they have their tropes. They have their own unique things going on with them, but there's more to them than that. Uh, and I was especially looking forward to Gale and um, Lizelle's. I'm, I'm looking forward to him covering Lizelle uh, because Lizelle is such a prominent character in that game. Like if you miss out on Lizelle's story missions, you are doing yourself an injustice because she is such a very unique character in this game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop babbling and we're going to get back to the music. But uh, I, I I like so far what I'm hearing because I've just, I just spent seven minutes rattling on 52 seconds of the song. What am I doing with my life? Behold his hubris and vanity. Behold Hold on, I want to I want to turn this up a little bit. There we go. Oh, the wizard of poverty. His failed ambition, then you must feed unless you teach him humility. Mm. He had it all, if not for greed. He had it all, the wizard of poverty. I think this is a, a very prominent uh, story element for most wizards. The idea that like Gale basically screwed his own life up because of his lust for power and greed um, can easily be tied into most wizards because of the fact that the wizard class in D&D &D learns spells through reading, like through study. And knowledge is power. Knowledge is an intricate like web of power that all you have to do is just start finding the threads and you just keep pulling and pulling and that soon sooner or later that search becomes an obsession which is exactly what happened with gale 
Um, so I, I, I like how he, <laughs> I like how he, he phrased that where, you know, if it wasn't for his greed, he would have had everything he could have ever wanted, but because he's a wizard, that greed became an obsession simply because the nature of the class requires him to continue to study more and more. Um, I'm not saying that all wizards are like that, but I'm saying it is a very easy thing for someone to fall into if you're not careful. Yep. Anyone who hasn't, like, let Gale die or has killed him themselves, don't. If you're going to have Gale in your party, you need to keep him alive. You can't just send him off to die like any of the other characters, because otherwise you're you're in for a bad time and a, and a restart screen. <laughs> I really like the instrumental for this one too. Like this one is definitely, um, I, I have to say that like my favorite instrumental so far of these is probably Carlac, which is weird because Carlac feels kind of like a, uh, almost like a wild west theme. Uh, but yet at the same time, considering how wild and, and, and crazy she is, it kind of fits at the same time. Um, and then following shadow hearts. And then this one, I think those are in that order. Like the, it's, it, feels very bardic and yet it also feels very on brand for the character and i i think that's one of my favorite things that i'm loving about these uh these um these bard songs so far that jonathan's been creating is that these characters are coming alive not just in the lyrics but also in the instrumental they feel like they should be tied to the character and i'm very curious to see what he's going to cook up for when it comes to lizelle and will and if he covers Man uh, Minthara, I hope he covers Minthara because Minthara is one of my favorite characters that I've seen people play with in the uh, in their campaigns. I personally can never have her because I can't do I can't I can't kill the druids. I can't do it. I can't burn the druids to the ground. I just can't do it. So I will never experience Minthara myself unless they patch the game or I use a mod. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, he covers Minthara because Minthara would be a fantastic, fantastic uh, topic for a song like this. That was really fun. That was really, really fun. Uh, I, I very much, very much uh, enjoy what he decided to go with there. Um, I'm really hoping, like I said, that he comes out with uh, additional content for for uh, some of the lesser known characters. Halson, Minthara, uh, those are two of uh, my favorite like uh, characters. Um, Minsk would be a fun one. I'm still hoping for Ketherick Thorm, honestly. In fact, since he asked uh, what character he should do next, I am going to be putting Ketherick in the uh, the description or in the uh, the comments of that video because I feel like 
Ketherick, despite the fact he's a boss, and despite the fact he only appears really in like a small portion of Act 2, we find out so much about him. There's there's enough there, I think, to be able to craft some kind of song. And because there's not enough there to really fully flesh out him as a character, that leaves enough for artistic interpretation, I think. But there's enough there for, for a topic of a song to be created. I could almost guarantee that. So I'm hoping, I'm praying that Jonathan like considers it. But uh, anyway, that's going to be it for me. Thank you for joining me. I am Mark Alpha 12 and I will see you in the next video.